good afternoon students welcome to the 29th lecture of refrigeration and air conditioning subject in the saturday's class we have discussed about the introduction to the condensers how the condensers are used for the refrigeration system and the classification of condensers air cooled condensers and water cooled condensers and also we have seen the properties related to the condensers today in this class we'll discuss about the water cooled condenser a comparison of water cooled condensers and air cooled condensers heat transfer in condensers so these are the topics today we'll discuss in this session yes we'll go to the water cooled condensers in the last class we have discussed about the air cooled condensers today in this class we will discuss about the water cooled condensers right see the ski the ski see the schematic diagram of the water cooled condenser using waste water system so here water cooled condenser with recirculating water system so here the water recirculating here the water just we are using the water so the water cooled condenser is one in which the water is used as a condensing medium so in a water cooled condenser the medium what we use is water in an air cooled condenser the medium what we use is air they are always prefer when adequate supply of clear inexpensive water are a means of water disposal available so generally we go with the inexpensive medium of material that is the water than air now these condensers are common used in commercial and industrial refrigeration units so because the water is inexpensive and easily available so we are using water as a refrigeration unit for both commercial as well as industrial applications right so the water cool system are used for the two water systems one is waste water system other one is a recirculated water system so the figure shows the waste water system the figure shows a recirculator recirculation water system so see the water waste water system here from the vapor right from the evaporator the vapor refrigerant the vapor refrigerant is passing into the compressor and from the compressor the hot vapor refrigerant is passing into the condenser is passed into the water cooled condenser so the refrigerant which is in the vapor mode is passed into the condenser where the water is cooled thereby the liquid refrigerant and the liquid refrigerant is passed to the next unit that is a receiver right here from for the water cooled condenser the water is the water is coming inside and the water is going outside through the tubes water from the city main water from the city main water from the sewer pipe so the way the waste water is going into the sewer pipe the fresh water is going into the water cooled condenser so here the water due to the water is cooling the due to the water which is in cool condition the hot vapor is converted into the liquid refrigerant to the receiver system that is by using the waste water mechanism but in the second case the waste water cooled condenser with circulating water system is used the figure is same only the thing is the vapor refrigerant from the evaporator is passing into the compressor and from the compressor the hot vapor is passed into the water cooled condenser but in the water cooled condenser so it is passing to the liquid refrigerant to the receiver as case in the water type but so here we are using recirculated water so for recirculated water so we are using a condenser water pump we are using a makeover pump and a cooling water where where uh, where the water is going out just see here the warm water to the sewer pipe here also the warm water is going out and again and it is passing into the cooling tower which is placed apart from the condenser 
so the wastewater here the wastewater is going to a sewer system but here the wastewater is going into the cooling tower from the cooling tower it is again passing into the condenser pipe and again it is going into the cold water in into the this condenser so only the thing is we have added the extra setup and we have changed the channel and passing of wastewater into the condenser tower that is a two types of water cooled condensers right so in the wastewater system in the wastewater system the water after circulating the condenser is discharged into the sewer on the chatta sewer means the drainage so here the water is going into the drainage as shown in the figure here the system is used on small units and in locations where large quantities of fresh inexpensive water and the sewer system large enough to handle the wastewater are available the most common source of fresh water supply is a city main right the most common source of fresh water supply is from the city only right next coming to the recirculated water system here the same water is re same water circulating in the condenser is cooled and be used again and again how it is used again and again here the system requires some type of water cooling device the cooling water towers the cooling water towers and the spray ponds are the most common cooling devices used in the recirculated water system the warm water from the condenser is led to the cooling tower where it is cooled by self evaporation into the stream of air the water pumps are used to circulate the water through the system and then to the cooling tower which is usually located on the roof okay so once the recirculated water system is filled with water the only additional water requirement is make up water the make up water simply replaces the water that evaporates from the cooling tower to the spray pond so that is the mechanism that where we are using makeover pond for the usage right okay next coming to the water types of water cooled condensers so in the water cooled condensers we are having two systems one is wastewater system other one is regenerated wastewater system but in the types of water cooled condensers we are having three types we are having three types first one is tube in tube or double tube condenser second one is counter flow system third one is a parallel flow system so these are the three types of second one is a shell and coil type of condensers third one is a shell and tube type of condensers right so what is the concept here so the types of water cooled condensers are of three types shell and tube shell and shell and tube and the tube in tube or double tube condensers so we study this three in detail now now what is the first one tube in tube or a double tube condenser so here the tube in tube or double tube condenser shown in the figure consists of a water tube inside a large refrigerant tube water consists of a water tube inside a large refrigerant tube here the condenser in this type of condenser the hot vapor refrigerant enters the top of the condenser so here in this type of mechanism it is coming from the top of the condenser where which one the the refrigerant the water absorbs the heat from the refrigerant okay the water in yes nakara the water absorbs the heat from the refrigerant and condensed liquid refrigerant flows the bottom so the refrigerant tubes are exposed to the ambient air therefore some of the heat is applied by absorbed as ambient air by natural convection
okay now the water absorbs the heat from the direct refrigerant and the condensed liquid refrigerator flows the bottom so the refrigerant tubes has to expose the ambient air therefore the heat is also absorbed by the ambient air by natural convection the cooled water in the inner tubes may flow in the heated direction when the water enters the bottom and flows direction opposite the refrigerant it is said to be counter flow system see here the cold water in the inner tubes may flow in the either direction a move in the forward direction or in the backward direction when the water enters the bottom and flows in the direction opposite the refrigerant it is known as counter flow system on the other hand when the water enters the top and flows the, in the same direction as that of refrigerant it is known as parallel flow system now see the figure here so the tube in tap the tube in tube or double tube condenser system so here the tube in tube see here the water out the water in so here the water is going inside the shell and is passing tube in tube okay so here the hot vapor refrigerant from compressor so whatever the vapor refrigerant is there the vapor refrigerant from the compressor is passing into the condenser unit so when the process is going on so here what happens the vapor refrigerant is passed inside the pipe inside the pipe and it is going in different different directions see here it is passing in different different directions and finally so it is finally it is passing into the downward states and here again to the liquid refrigerants to recover so that is a process happening in the tube and tube refrigerator system tube and tube refrigerator system okay now the counter flow system as shown in the figure 10.5 as shown in the figure 10.5 is preferred for all types of water cooled condenser because of high rate of heat transfer here the rate of heat transfer is very high since the coldest water is used for final cooling of a liquid refrigerant and the warmest water absorbs the heat from the hottest vapor refrigerant therefore the temperature difference between the water and the refrigerants remain fairly constant throughout the condenser so in case of parallel flow system as the water and the refrigerant flow in the same direction therefore the temperature difference between them increases so the ability of water to absorb the heat decreases as it passes through the condenser so there is a mechanism of this tube in tube condenser tube in tube condenser next one shell and coil condenser shell and coil see the figure in the left side we can see shell and shell type of condenser okay now next one is a shell and coil condenser so in the shell and coil condenser right so in the shell and condenser type so here a shell and condenser shown in the figure 10.6 has one or more water coils enclosed in a welded steel shell so it is steel cylindrical shell where the coil is suspended and it is having a formed shape both the finial type and bare coil types are available next the shell and the coil condenser may be either vertical type or a horizontal type but in the law in the type of the condenser the hot vapor condensing enters at the top form of the shell and surrounds the water water coils so as a vapor condenser it drops to the bottom to the shell which often serves as a receiver 
most vertical type shell and the coil condensers use counter flow water system as it means more efficient than a parallel flow system so here the condensers the coil tubing is free to expand and contract so in this type of system what happens the coil is used to free and expand and contracts with the temperature changes because of the spring action and can withstand any strain caused by the temperature changes so the water coils are enclosed in a welder steel shell water coils are enclosed in a steel shell therefore the mechanical cleaning of the sinks is not possible so the capacity are cleaned with the chemicals these coils are cleaned with the chemicals so once this has been uh, done so we can see the shell type which is a welded cylindrical shell inside we are having a uh, coil where the refrigerant is placed okay so the mechanical cleaning of the coil is not possible the coils are either the, the oils are the coils are cleaned with chemicals so the coils what they are placed or immersed inside the steel shell are placed with the or cleaned with the chemicals the shell and the coil condensers are used for units up to 50 tons capacity 50 tons capacity right so see here so the warm water waste water out the chill water into the coil so here in the condenser this is a steel shell right so it's a steel shell steel shell so it is a coil so it is a pipe waste water pipe system okay now let's uh, see the next one shell and tube you could have just shell and coil type but here shell and tube type condenser so here in the shell and tube type condenser what happens the shell and a tube condenser shown in the 10.7 consists of a cylinder steel shell containing a number of straight water tubes but it is placed in the horizontal setup the tubes are expanded into the groove in the tube sheet holes from two from a vapor tight fit so here the grooves are attached as per the system the tube sheets are welded to the shell at the both ends at the both ends the tube sheets are welded and both ends the tube sheets are welded the removable box the removable water boxes are bolted to the tube sheet at each end of the uh, system and it is used for cleaning of the condenser the immediate support are provided to the shell to avoid sagging of tubes sagging of tubes but we'll see so just we'll see if openly we cannot understand okay now next one so the condenser tubes are made with steel or copper with or without fins the steel tubes without fins are usually used in used for ammonia type of refrigerant system because ammonia corrodes a copper tubing also right in this type of condenser the hot vapor refrigerant enters at the top of the shell and condenses as it comes in contact with the water tubes the condenser liquid reciprocates down to the bottom of the shell which often serves as a receiver however if the maximum storage capacity uh, for the liquid represent is less than the total change of the system then the receiver of an adequate capacity has to be added in case of pump down facility to be provided as in case of ice plants okay in some condensers extra rows of flour water tubes are provided at the lower end of the condenser for some cooling of the liquid refrigerant system okay now we'll see the figure here see the figure here once see the figure uh, 
uh, the file. Uh, So it is a schematic uh, horizontal figure of the shell and tube refrigeration condenser type of refrigeration system, right? So next. See the horizontal figure starting from the left to right. Okay, so so you're having a steel and a shell and tube type. So in the earlier case, it is a shell and shell, shell and tube type, right? But here you are having the shell and tube type, but there it is shell and coil type. But you are having here a big tube. A big tube where it is enclosed front face and the back face next mm. Mm. okay so 35 right okay. so, so here we are having uh, the water is going out the water is coming inside of the steel shell instead of the steel shell so here we are just just we are operating the process by using the this medium right by using the uh, vapor as a medium but here we are using water as a medium but in uh, earlier case we used as a air as a medium right so here based upon the based upon the uh, the material what we are using uh, the medium what we are using so it will be decided the design of a uh, mechanical system or any overhaulings can be done easily without any problem right see here water is going out water is coming in so here a water channel water box so shown in the uh, slant portion it is a baffle where it is placed at the center of the tube so it is a horizontal tube where the condenser shell the thick condenser shell it is not over on two sides right so it is having the flanges on two sides okay so okay so here the condenser shell this is a condenser shell now here the liquid line is passing into this chamber but here the refrigerator and vapor n is going into this chamber from the via evaporator here the see the tubes here the tubes are in a straight line fashion but in a earlier case you are having a coil type of tubes but here we are having a straight line tubes number of tubes depends upon the diameter of the shell now the tube sheet tube sheet is placed like this okay now this is a basic figure of shell and tube type of condenser system shell and tube type of condenser system got it now we'll see the comparison uh, now we'll see the comparison of air cooled system and water cooled condenser so very very important question comparison of air cooled system and water cooled system Now see the first one air cooled condenser since the construction of air cooled condenser is very simple therefore the initial cost is less the maintenance cost is also less 
because we are using water as a medium which will be st stored here the construction is somewhat rigid when compared to the air cooled condenser therefore the initial cost is high therefore the maintenance cost is also high that is the first point second point there are no handling problems with air cooled condensers but we are handling the water so we are handling the water we have a problem of water handling system so that we can rectify next third point the air cooled condensers do not require okay the air cooled condensers do not require piping arrangement piping and arrangement for carrying in the air this there is also no problem of disposing of is it through air so whenever you are doing the process the air is from the chimney so the smoke will release out so here also there is no problem of disposing of used air but in the water cool system the pipes are required definitely to take the water and from the condenser okay there is a problem of disposing the used water unless a recirculation system is provided unless a recirculation system is provided next point since there is no since there is no corrosion therefore the following for is low the following fact is low but here because since the corrosion occurs inside the tubes carrying the water therefore the falling effects also high the air cooled condensers have low heat transfer capacity due to the thermal conductivity of air the air cooled condensers the air cooled condensers same day the air cooled condensers have low heat transfer capacity due to the low conductivity of air the water cooled condensers have high heat transfer capacity due to the high thermal conductivity of condensers the water cooled is having high capacity so high conductors high conductors the water the air cooled system are low capacity therefore we are having a low system process next these condensers these condensers are used for low capacity plants less than 5 tr so these condensers are used for the low plant capacities next these condensers are used for the larger capacity plants therefore next since the power required to drive a fan is excessive therefore the fan noise becomes objectionable so here there is no fan noise right next here we are having here we are having the objectionable but here there is no concept of there is no concept of fan noise next ninth one the distribution of air on condenser surface is not uniform so the distribution so we don't have additional uh, support for the air medium so the distribution of air on the oil condenser on an air condenser is not uniform but here there is a even distribution of air on the condensing device next the air cooled condensers have high flexibility obviously The air cooled condensers have high flexibility because we are using air as a medium. The water cooled condensers are having low flexibility because of the maintenance we are we are doing. So these are the comparison of air cooled system versus water cooled system, right? Next, heat transfer in the condensers. What is the heat transfer going on in condensers? the heat transfer q can be calculated for the water cooled condensers is given by q is equals to u a delta t u a into delta t that is equal to delta t by capital r therefore u is equal to overall heat transfer coefficient and a is equals to surface area coefficient the surface area of the condenser okay now see delta t is equal to overall temperature of the condenser temperature difference of the condenser and capital r is equal to overall thermal resistance of a condenser that is equal to 1 by mu a 1 by mu a
okay now we'll see the small derivation so here the delta d is equal to overall temperature change capital r is equal to r thermal uh, resistance of a condenser therefore to find the overall thermal resistance let us consider a small part of the water flowing in a tube inside the tube and the refrigerant outside the tube and in the shell of a condenser now when the when it is already when it is already st uh, steady state is created there is a film of water inside the tube there is a film of water inside the tube over the scale formed due to the hardness other layer of film moved to the more so we are using what so we are using the film over uh, right now see here the heat transfer from the vapor refrigerant system to the water in the tubes takes place in the following manner now see the one layer this is a second layer this is a third layer now the water flow is going in this direction there is a steel shell and the refrigerant of the medium now the water flow now see here the same thing we are exaggerated the refrigerant this is a T2, this is a T3, this is a X, right? So T5, wastewater film, T4, the scale layer, the tube thickness refrigerating vapor condensing system. So this is a tube thickness, tube thickness. So the heat transfer mechanism, how on a condenser is going on. Next, see the first point, how the heat transfer is flown. What is the time? The time is 320 uh, now we'll see three cases how the heat transfer is taking place in this system right okay so after three things we are having four points we are having a uh, 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 So the time we are having less than two minutes. So we'll see the first case. The heat transfer takes place. The heat transfer takes place from the vapor refrigerant to the outside of the tube through the condensing film. The value of this heat transfer is given by this is the first case. Q is equals to H naught into A naught T1 minus T2 or T1 minus T2 is equals to Q by H naught A naught. What is the T1, T2? Temperatures of refrigerating vapor condensing film. Temperature at the outside surface of the tube. H naught is equal to coefficient of heat transfer for the refrigerant vapor condensing film. And A2, A naught is equal to condensing area. Condensing area. So this is the first case. What is the second case here? The heat transfer... The heat transfer takes place from the outside surface. Here the heat transfer is taking place from the outside of the surface. So if you see on the east to the so if it is placed on the E, uh, we are having the uh, Q is equals to H0 into A0 T1 minus T2. The heat transfer takes place from the outside, outside on the to the inside surface of the tube. The value of the heat transfer can be given as Q is equals to K into AM T2 minus T3 divided by X. Therefore, T2 minus T3 is equals to QX by K into AM, where T3 is equal to temperature on the inside surface of the tube, X is equal to thickness of the tube, K is equal to thermal conductivity of a material tube, and AM is equal to mean surface of the tube. So, right? So, we are having expansion devices uh, evaporate to condensers so we'll divide we'll discuss these topics in the next class right 
so we stopped at this point so we can wound up this one just we'll see the heat transfer takes place through the layer of the scale the value of this three t t transfer is given by q is equals to h1 okay now see here q is equal to hf into a into t3 minus t4 t3 minus t3 right so where T4, HF, and A1 are the temperatures, uh, HF is a coefficient of heat transfer, A is a area. The last one is the heat transfer takes place from the boundary layer film to the water inside the tube. Therefore, the value of the heat transfer is given by Q is equals to Q is equals to HI into AI into T4 minus T5. T4 minus T5 is equal to Q of HI AI. Therefore, T5 is equal to temperature and HI is equal to coefficient. Therefore, adding the equation 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, T1 minus T5 is equals to Right, so there's a method. Right, so here the Q is equals to H I of A of T four minus T five. So substituting those values, we are getting T one minus T five is equals to Q H naught A naught plus Q X by K into A M Q by H F A I Q by H F H I A I. Therefore, T1 minus T5 is equals to Q divided by U0 by lambda0. So with this, uh, we'll stop the class. We'll discuss the class tomorrow. Have a nice day. Enjoy your day.